here we are back at our wellhead and we're going to make an attempt to remake a better version of the oil drill instead of using and beefing up the old one which now that we've learned some of the uh, features and key ideas behind making it work I think it'll be much easier and much better the second time around so let's see what we can do first things first we're going to bring down and make a platform for ourselves to work on in this area and in this area now we have a lot we have a whole platform like we can extend it all the way to there only downside being I mean it maybe we'll use it for something else later uh, we just need to have like this step up be something meaning like I'm just gonna have to put this going all the way around so we can easily climb up it it'll be an, a little nicer like that okay the second thing we need to note is that based on our first attempt so that's the center based on our first attempt where we had those um, rods this time around I want to have a system that's a little more uh, user-friendly so not mining but rather the uh, industrial I think is what it was called industrial rotary table so that goes right over top of the hole there perfect and there's a slot right through it now someone is telling me that maybe it's enough for a small motor to be used to power this uh, rotary table I don't know uh, we could try it out thing power what it's gonna look like here so that's giving this little motor is giving it all it has but that's what it's spinning at so I think we do need that medium-sized motor obviously the refinements and this type of thing can come at a later stage too once we get the basic structure up. But for now, let's stick with that. We'll turn on our symmetry. So I did like the system of the rods being placed nearby. I may want to do something where an automated system grabs it and locates it over the hole. I just don't, um, that may be nice because then we could have it off to one of the sides and our control tower and all of our oil stuff will be in one area because we had a big problem with it clashing in the last uh, revision that I made. One of the things I wasn't a fan of in my other design was the uh, amount of just random cables and hoses kind of going all over the place. So in this version, my idea is to try to make it a cleaner design starting with the actual tower itself. Now I guess there's no need for it to go any lower than this. Stop that there. Stop that there. So that's as low as it needs to go really. And on that, because right now, like can we build something over top of this? I guess we can, it doesn't limit. Okay, so we could build something right up against it. So in this case, we'll put a couple of our linear track bases, just like that, and link them all together. There we go. Now 
Now the nice thing with these is that they can transfer fluid down. So for our slurry, we can actually use them and not have to have cables dangling down, which is kind of what the bigger problem that I had earlier was. And in addition to this now, we need a couple things. So we need our clamp system, which is this guy. So we'll po probably put the one, this one that can connect the rods together. And I did like the system I had last time when it was perfectly aligned. I don't want it to be moving in any which direction. I want it to be aligned right over the wellhead. So not there, but one over like that. And also now we could use these to link them together. Perfect. And I'll probably put the top at the top like that. So now we're aligned with our hole which just makes things so much easier when we need to insert in the uh, rod. We don't have to worry then about having to like position it and have it glitch all over the place. So this is just a clean, simple way of putting that. Now our next call it problem that we need that we know right away that we need to face is our rods. So the issue with the rods, being all in this area and having that massive uh, system that I had in the other video, which is this system here. So I did like how the rods were taking things or how the rods were picked up from the mechanism itself and lowered, but we had a bit of a clash. Like when the rod was sticking out through the hole here, this device that I'm gonna paint in blue, like when the whole contraption moved, it would hit that rod and we'd have to like push it back and forward a little bit. So that was a little less than ideal. Um, we may be able to try to fight that by doing uh, the rods in a separate location. So we can make our rods, our rod storage either down like this and have them join up on the ground, maybe up here. But I actually did like the system. That's why I put the clamp there. I did like the system of clamping it right there the only thing that needs to be considered now is that we have to have the rod um, position itself into that location. So an idea actually that I think I like is a pivot that is located somewhere here that carries over the rod in kind of a single motion from the rod storage so the only thing that has to be considered now is that the length of this like say we pick up a rod here if we position our rod here and we pick up our rod and now this thing like moves over i guess it would go in the counterclockwise direction it would go around like this and put it in there obviously the reason we can't go clockwise is if we go clockwise it's gonna hit this thing here like this and actually maybe it'll be better if we just put the this whole contraption right in parallel maybe that's the way to go parallel meaning right here so the the arm itself is located here and all it does is rotate like that and into there so that may work the best let's try out so I just went and hit head and built this simple demonstration uh, I put a lever or a yeah a lever in this pivot I'm gonna see how it aligns when in the real world and see if this system may work um, one thing that this uh, allows us to do is have the have the rods in a separate location. I'll still need to do some playing with this and have think of a system, maybe a track system that runs in the vertical, like in this direction here, that carries rods and that positions itself into place for this. 
but I do want to see how this works. And just by the way, I'm cutting and like restarting the video just because I'm testing this out as I go. It's a little easier than talking through a more complex design, which I'm hoping this is. So bear with me. The creation has been spawned and let's see how the system works. So if we move this in this direction, it obviously maxes out here. So we have to make it start in this location, like spawn the pivot. If we want to use the uh, power pivot versus the one that can spin freely in millions of circles, which is the velocity one. But the downside of velocity is you're stuck with velocity rather than position. So this is a good test. I rebuilt the clamp on a pivot system now, as well as positioned this whole contraption to move into location there with that pivot or with the with the actual wellhead. So the pivot will move it into position and place the rod there. These pivots allow us to have the rod storage in line somewhere here on a track where they could move up and down. And this system will pick it up, pick up the individual rod, put it into place and lower it. And I think this will work much easier than the one we had last time. We're going to see if this demonstration video works or this demonstration works. So if we put this like that, this should come right in place and it does not. So see, we're like two blocks away from it or at least one block away, maybe two. So that pivot has to move locations. And then if we swing it out this way and then swing this, oops. Shoot, there's no negative, but the idea is there. So I think that will keep the rods in a nice location. So we had an issue where we were too close. So I guess this whole thing has to be moved out by one. And then let's enable this one to go to negative one. Okay, if we swing that. All right, at least we're in the right plane, but we're still, what, that's one block, so that's two blocks, we're two blocks away. But now if we swing out to this direction, and then swing this like that, that's where we're gonna have our rods. So we're gonna have a lineup of rods that can be easily added into this clamp. Okay, the system works okay. We're gonna have to move it by two. So extend this by two or move it closer by two. Because this is on a track, I guess we may as well just move it closer. There's no real downside I see. So one, two. Oh, we lost our pivot. That's fine. We'll easily add another one. Now worth noting is that I may even need to refine all of this. Like this may not even work. The clamp, this clamp here may be in the wrong place. Like I may need to have a track that also moves this thing up and down. But in, in that case, I may just do it at the location like, let me just do it here, which may probably be easier. Hopefully it's strong enough to lift, like hopefully this small, small track is strong enough to lift this into place. I guess it should be, but because the rods aren't that heavy, the heavy stuff is what we're putting on these massive um, tracks. That's going to be the heavy stuff. This stuff should be fairly light, but if, if not, we're always, we could always level it up, upgrade it. It's all that good stuff. That's part of the, the joy of Stormworks is that you just get to have a variety of different systems. We'll leave those. Well, first of all, let's put a nice big battery somewhere here. At, in the future, we're going to have an e-house is what they're called in the industry, electrical house or e-house. And usually what they are is just C-can containers 
that are placed with the crane truck on site and so like in, in in a shop they're all developed and built and then they place them out in on the site the whole e house with the control center with everything so they're all just in secan containers rather than a nice kind of workstations um we may want to I mean, I will try to make this as close to industry standards as possible, so it's as realistic as it gets. Just like our little truck with the the sight light up there. Okay, now if we pull this thing into place, that should be aligned fantastically with that. Perfect. Okay, so that's excellent. And then if we pull it in the other direction, and then extend this arm. Oops. Oh, I put new pivots. I see. The new pivot was not connected to this. It was connected to one of them, but not the second. Hence the delayed action or didn't want to move. Okay, well, let's pull this out this way and move this out that way. Okay, now that's in our fully extended form where we can now have, and this is all kind of clean like this rotating arm is still separated by this now here's where we could put our rods i guess if i had to guess we have um two blocks separating it and the rods will all be on track as well so we can put this small small pivots we'll put two of them separated like that connect them or actually that didn't make any sense we want it to be as close together as possible and then extend it over a track so this may be a little better all right we'll make the arrow facing that way and then put a track between them and extend it all in a track. Hopefully that pr supports us more or less structurally there. And then we could have a ton of, or not a ton, but we'll have plenty of rods attached to this system that independently positions itself over top of, or in line with uh, that uh, clamp that we have to pick it up. So that's there. Rod. We'll add some rods here now. Interesting, like it aligns itself with the rod head. But I guess what we were saying is we needed it to be two, two blocks. So I think this is where this test will come in. Oh. What happened over there? Oh, I see. We're just a little bit of an overhang. Place the rods here. So in theory, this whole area can be full of rods, just like that. Now, we may need to make a truck that can deliver more rods in case we use all of them. But for now, this kind of is my idea. And let's see if this works. It's a little funny looking, like it's all supported on this tiny thing. That's going to be fixed in a second. I just want to see if this general system works. No, so we put them too close, actually. Well, not too close, but we put the... Uh, like, that is how far we want it, I guess. But in the motion of spinning, it kind of pushes pushes the thing away which implies putting this it'll be on a two track system and these guys will will feed it with another one here actually no let's delete all this so these are in a okay position for us right now this thing we don't need anymore. 
obviously there's a lot of them and it kind of looks clunky from a distance. I'm not a big fan of how that actually looks. But what we could always do is put like our filter or our slurry reservoir behind it, like a big tall slurry reservoir. And then the fact that you have this won't look as out of place. And also maybe we don't need like 27 of these, maybe fine to just have that many. Though I do like to make the creation a bit more uh, useful right off the bat instead of having the crane truck come and deliver more rods and all that stuff. Like it's nicer just to have a, a system that works right off the bat properly. So I'll just leave all them, whatever. Um, this thing obviously works, we just proved, but I'd like to make a system where these are also on a on a track in th the red direction as well. So in this direction and in this direction can position themselves because then we can position it and then push it towards this and it'll work a little easier than the clash we just saw. That wasn't great. So in that case, we'll make it start back here like this. And then we'll have a system that we build that can use the tracks in two directions. So one direction would be this up and down. And really we only need it to move one. Like I don't want it to be able to move any more than that. So if we start it here, We'll make positive in that direction, like that. And then this one will be the track. And this will be the track. And then on top of this, we actually need to have another track system that moves this into place. So this is to get the whole thing in line with the um, clamp. And then we'll want a system that can be moving this on a little track left and right into position. Now that may not be not like the, the extents of how much it's moving may be not working or may not be proper, but that should be okay for now. What I'm going to do is put a numerical switch box, or rather the door that I, my door buttons that I have. So my door with a simple toggle button that will put, so the toggle button will move this either into or out of position. It's a linear track base, so actually this is slider speed. So that doesn't quite work. But what does work is if we make this a large track, those, I, I prefer those instead of these ones. These are working by speed. So let's just get the general gist of the system working and then we'll make it proper. Okay, that moves it in and out, that moves it that, and everything needs to have power. Let's try that. Oh, geez. Whoops. Forgot to connect something here. Or it's just too heavy. Maybe it's too heavy in that direction for the track because something was knocked over, but it seems that it's attached. Hmm. <clears throat> what if I delete all these? I see, so it's too heavy in that direction. This one broke. Because we had all these heavy, how heavy are they, the rods? 10, I guess it adds up. So 
So instead of 10, let, instead of many of them, let's just try with like five or something. See if it still breaks. I guess the easy fix is if it's still breaking is we're just gonna have this track repeated in another location to hold it in place, like back here. So then we just extend this and extend this and have that come to there. And then this one here with the negative in that direction and with the negative in that direction. And then we'll be attached on this. These two obviously need to be attached like that. So now the whole system is attached and then we need to have this repeated back here like that where they're also attached to the back of this. And this should provide us with some type of structural support to prevent the whole thing from tilting forward. It may still want to glitch out and do it, but at least we'll see if this is the right way we can do it. Okay, we need to power everything up. Make sure that these are also connected here and then let's just go ahead and do the full full thing we'll put that there and test to see if we can actually move that into position and we just need to have power to this guy that should be all let's give it a shot So now it's not falling over, which is nice. Okay, we could move it in place. That's good too. And then this one allows us to move there. So we'll move it back there. Bring this arm, bring this arm. And then now we can pull this towards it. And boom, voila. Obviously we can see the whole thing's trying to tilt forward. so. That's not ideal, but what I can do is I can actually center these now on this. Because it goes beneath. The track will actually go beneath that. So this whole thing can be such that it is like centered with on top of this pivot. We'll obviously need to have these extend more towards the location though. So we've moved it now. They used to be here, so one, two. So we'll have to move the whole system over by two, which is fine, not a problem. And they're pretty heavy, like how many do we have? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13 of them. So these things are pretty heavy in themselves. Uh, obviously they want to fall over and this may not be even feasible like it may just be too heavy of a moving part but let's see if we can pull the track by two towards it now one two okay so theoretically that should be the same and the weight should be centered on top of this. Like maybe we need a track at the top system too, and then, then it'll hold it in place. But right now I'm just supported from the bottom, which isn't the best. Um, I guess we could do that. We'll make ourselves an inverted frame here with all this stuff, minus this. So 
so this is everything we need. We'll make a copy of it and bring it up to the top here and then just inverse it so it's flipped downwards like that and bring that into position here. So now these things Oh, maybe we weren't even connected. Interesting. So we'll connect these. So it's all the same color. Perfect. There. And then obviously the track themselves. The blue is here. That's fine the orange has to be connected to the other orange up there there we got to turn that orange what i don't like is the complex nature like how complex this is all looking i wanted to make a clean design but this may just be too intricate for a clean design now And then what, so that's all the orange thing. So now we can have that moving in place. But now this green frame has to be attached to the red. So that's actually where the real structure comes in. Like this is straight up just oh, down there. And now it's fully supported. So now our whole thing is kind of encased in a frame, if you will. What happened here? So here, oh, we have to extend it by one. Let's extend that by one and drop it all the way down there. Okay, so that in, in, this, in this case now, we've actually built like a fully supported tower of these rods, which actually doesn't look bad, to be honest. at least symmetrical so that can work um, what is not good is obviously okay we move this as soon as we move this little thing it'll start hitting that okay we actually cannot do this at all or we can but we could we have to keep it limited to a size like say when this thing is here when the clamp is here we'll have access to this rod okay that makes sense I guess we may as well delete this and make it centered perfectly so in this case we now have the rod being in the right spot but we can't make this whole thing full of rods because it'll clash so we can now have the extent of movement in each direction and also let's center this. So we have this one and we have one, two, three, four, five, and we have one, two, three, four, five. So these guys are redundant. So now we're fully centered in here. So now our system, that is this set of rails, can move us in this direction or this direction only until the end of this. So the amount of blocks this is, which is from here to there is 10. So that's, we could only have five because we have to move this in order for it to reach the last one there. So I guess this is what our system is limited to this many rods. If we're trying to do this massive frame structure that moves within it and whatever, um, that may be what we're stuck with. Alternatively, we can open up open up this wall. What is in here and what is in here? This thing's just structure like this this wall isn't actually moving up and down. I guess that's what we need to do. Then we can have as many of these things as we want. So this wall is no good. 
it's no good because it's blocking our path. Whereas if we actually just put, and then, so if we just put this, attaching it right there, and same thing here on this corner, but one away, because we still have to be able to move that in and out. But once that's there, we can drop it all the way down. Okay, and same thing on this side. So remove this wall entirely. Because the orange system, if we see here, the orange system is what's moving left and right. Or sorry, these ones, the blue ones moving left and right within the orange system. So it has to be able to clear past this. And in this case it can. So if we remove this wall as well, now we should be able to move them freely. I think. So the more I looked at it, the more I actually thought I don't want this part to be able to extend out past this because what if we build something here? We like we have to make sure that it doesn't leave this area. So what I'm going to do instead is actually close this off on both sides and that way you end up with a structure that's like sealed off pretty much and on the back too like a big tower that contains these rods that can move in the direction to to get these ones in place so we'll need to confirm that once it's symmetrical like this, what I'm showing here. So once this red part is where the uh, cl clamp will come in and we have this area here. So this is a, how far our rods extend. We have to be able to clear them in this direction. So the number that we have here, like the five, we'll have to extend five past it. So to there. So we could actually pull this wall in by one. And likewise here. So the five on there will have to be able to extend by five to there. And that's how big our structure, like how big this uh, structure is going to be. I went ahead and made it symmetrical, as I showed on this. And let cleaned it up a little bit. It looks a little nicer. And now for the final test to see if this mechanism works in general. So... We position this thing out there, and then you can have this, actually not that yet, you can align any of these, including the very last one. So that's the last one here, yep. Or we could put it the other direction, and have it aligned with the last one there. Yeah, so it's aligned, so we have all of those aligned, and then we can pull this thing towards it and that would be the closest way to clamp it and then of course this thing can move up and down on this little crane but that would be the closest way and and fastest and then that slides in and puts it onto the wellhead the next step I want to do is clean up this uh, system because I don't like these types of buttons so I'll do that offline and be back to you soon I'm just building a control center platform which I wanted to put here and in there is going to be all the buttons to control this thing, as well as possibly walkways as we develop the rest of the structure to reach these areas, like just have little walk walkways. But this is where I'd like the control, control hub to be. And then it'll be a room after, but for now let's just make it simple. Or rather, let's make it a room. It'll look nicer as a room. You'll walk in. It'll be a door somewhere here. So that's where the door is going to go. I'll make it a sliding door. And there we go. Now 
and this will all be glass. And this will be a big table in the front for the control panel. Make it a little higher actually, like that. And this is where you'll control the operations. Uh, until I get it working properly, let's not worry about this right now. Let's just leave it open like that. So the buttons themselves uh, have to be, I want it to be automated or at least not automated, but functioning with as simply as simple as possible. So for that reason, let's throw our microcontrollers on the roof for now, and then we'll hide them somewhere after. So I envision we need two door buttons with two toggle buttons. In theory, we should have a breaker panel before we get out of hand and have too many, too many things and then it'll be so hard to add the battery. Or it'll be so hard to wire this in. So I always like to make the live end A and that's just easy to memorize. So the live is A. Let's actually delete that battery. It'll be easier from scratch. So live end is A and everything else is B. So we'll call this one the uh, rod, rod mechanism. All this and all this. That's all part of the rod mechanism. That's spelled wrong for sure. Rod system, a little easier to spell. Okay, now we've got that in. So this one will turn on this button, this one will turn on this button. And what they do is this one will position our pivot uh, maybe we don't want a button. Or we do. That's fine. We do. We don't want this to be sitting here. That's that makes no sense. So we'll turn it we'll call this one rod positioning. Rod. That's the best way to define it. This this guy here. Like this one here will be swinging in this direction or there. Rod. Rod positioning system, sure. And the second one will be clamp position, positioning, and it'll be on is equal to um, insert or not insert. Because the way I want to name them is so that it's very clear to everyone. And then these guys will attach to the respective pivots. So this one is the rod positioning system, and that means this here. And then this one is for the clamp positioning, which is equal to these two ones here and here. And I'm using the wrong button, obviously, so we'll have to redo that. My door, but my door, door controller with values, that's the one I want. Even though it's not a door, the idea is the same. So this pivot is attached to the rod positioning, which is the big one. And then this one's the clamp positioning, which is the small one. So we'd like them to be in our off position. I want it to be one and in the closed to be zero, which is gonna mean that when it's off, the um, off one is negative one. So it'll be positioned ready to take one of these. And then when you press the button, it's gonna put it in one, which is aligned with putting the rod into place for the actual drill. And then this one is same thing. We want it to be 
either, but not one and negative one. We either want it to be um, negative one, which is straight or zero, which is in the right position. So we want it to start off in negative one and zero. Let's see if this worked. I heard the pivots moving, so it should be in the fully, oh, that's not it. Oh, they're not powered. I thought I was forgetting something. The breaker is not on. That's what it was. Simple fix, geez. I have to respawn the whole thing just over one single breaker that I could have turned on while I was up there. Okay, there we go. So now they're in perfect position and alignment to pick up the first rod. Now say we've gone down there, we've picked up the first rod, then we move that, and then we move this, and we move that right in a position there. Boom, attach, and once we've detached it, we're good to... So we definitely don't want that to happen. We want it, you to bring it back and then that. And also the thing's kind of breaking down there. I don't know if it's too heavy for this track. How heavy is this? 30, I see, plus the rod is 10, so kind of heavy. Or did it hit something? No, I don't think so. Anyway, that seems to work okay, except for I don't want, when you pull it in, these buttons need, need some work. So that's something I'm gonna keep working on here. And this needs to be open. Just columns, that's much better. All right. I'm gonna keep working on this, see if I could perfect these buttons and I'll come back with the video when this is done. The system seems to be working now. If you press the button, so in default, it looks like that, it's in position and all you gotta do is move the rods closer and attach it, then move them back. And then to get it aligned to the well head, you just press this button and it automatically goes and rotates at the same time and plugs it right into there. And then you press this and it goes back to its default position. Now I added a pivot up there as well just to make this thing not fall out due to the weight. But it seems to be working okay. Now obviously you may need to, like I may need to automate this system there to prevent the rod like wheels, this this uh this track to be pushed out when this is coming in. So that may all be kind of a sequential type of activity that needs to be done. But in essence, now this is fairly straightforward and it seems that it's uh, working properly here. What I wanna do is have an instrument panel with uh, buttons for moving the rod positioning like wall we'll call that up and down so arrow button up and then we'll need one in the down direction arrow button down so that will move that whole thing up and down and then we need to move it in and out now this that in and out assist uh, the in and out movement is what's going to cause a clash with the clamp so I'm almost wondering if it's better just to have the that on a, on a separate button that can only be activated when this, like, in, in sequence almost. Like that you could only move it into place when this is already in place and vice versa. So maybe a locking button is better in that case. Um, but that's something that I need to tr test try. I've added the instrument panel. And what I decided was that I don't need it to be automated. If someone that's not thinking is using it, then they deserve to have an accident. We can't make it dummy proof. 
in the industry, you have to be smart, you have to be trained. So if you're trained to use this, you'll use it properly. So we have up, down, moving it up, down, and toward and away. And we've plugged in the instrument panel here. Now I may make a tutorial how to use instrument panels in general, but the way that this will work is we're going to have our um, the pip, the track that's on the actual wall to move it towards the clamp. So clamp um, track, and then we have our actual wall track. So in this instant, when you press, so we had it up down on the actual wall and then toward and away on the clamp track. So in this instant, it'll be like this. You have a numerical switch box that will be triggered by either of these and that will be fed to an addition which goes there. So if you press up or press one, which is track up, it'll be turning on and it'll be using a number that I specify here as 0.2. And then down will be negative 0.2. And I have no idea if that number works like speed wise, but let's give it a shot. And then we'll do the exact same thing for this. Or even if it's in the right direction, I have no idea. But let's take a look. And if we spawn it, oh, I definitely didn't give power to my instrument panel. But all these things should already have power. Yes. We'll spawn it up and take a look. So, of course. You can tell it's Sunday and it's been a long week. So, these ones, the, the connections have to be attached. So, the wall track, let's call, the wall track is the one that actually moves the whole wall. So, that's these ones. There's six down here, and there's another six at the top. Okay. This, the clamp track is the one that moves it towards and away from the track or from the from the clamp and that's these ones now it should work okay perfect and down and toward and away fantastic so we, this is now where that camera will come into play. Because what you do is you have this come into position and then you need a camera system that'll tell you that your uh, clamp is ready, like you're ready to move the thing forward like that and it's in line. So we'll have to find a place to put a camera, but otherwise that system seems to be working perfectly here. The camera can be like it's kind of tricky because the if we put the camera above this it'll clash and likewise if we put it somewhere else it won't be in line or aligned no actually i think that'll work that'll work perfectly so let's pull this up and have it come there and drop down or not even drop down that's where our camera is going to go right here because what that's going to tell us is if we're aligned. And for that, I'll need a little display here. And this display will be turned on when we're standing close to it or when we're pressing something. For now, let's just do a player sensor just to get it operational and I'd like to be standing really close to the station for it to be operational so it's not like 
on all the time or whatever. Okay, let's do this. And then we only have two more buttons left to do, and we've completed our track or our rod system. Of course, it's not on. Oh, because we didn't connect it to a camera. And because the camera is not plugged in. All right, let's go ahead and actually do the rest of it. So when this is in position, this clamp now needs to be able to clamp it and it needs to be able to move it up and down. Now, I really do like the system that I'm using here, like these uh, up and down arrows. So I'm going to make it the exact same system for, for the actual um, for the actual clamp. So we'll turn that off and we'll turn this off or better yet before we do that let's make it all in one nice joined location so here we'll have clamp or clamped rod clamped and then it won't be a arrow button it'll be a regular button or no it'll be an indicator and then number two will be clamp rod or rod clamp active and it'll be a regular button that's a toggle and it'll be three so three and four so that means everything's going to be nicely in this area and we'll need to create an instrument panel Let's just take this one as a starting point because I already like how it works and then we'll just expand on it. So we don't need any of this and we don't even need this. This thing is going to be, uh, okay. We need composite input or composite output rather, which is fine. That's where we connect to our instrument panel. Goodness. instrument panel and instrument panel that's fine and we deleted our clamp track so that we don't need anymore but we need our wall track and then we need this one which is our we need two of these actually one is an input for the uh, whether it's connected or not so clamped indicator and one of them is the actual clamp itself. Now this will look confusing, but it'll make sense in a, in a bit here. So clamp active. And this will be an input, this will be an output. Okay. What we remember now is that we had, well, this thing obviously will go here. So our number three composite track is the one that's going to turn on our clamp. And that's simple. We need now um, another type of composite, which is the right read write or write on off. So whether this is clamped, we'll now activate this. And this channel has to be channel four because that's what we said it was. So when it's, when it's clamped, our instrument panel is going to light up. This should work. And now we just have to make sure they're all plugged into the right thing. So this one is there. This one is there. This is for our um, velocity, which we're going to adjust in a second here. And then whether it's clamped and the actual clamp itself. So this will be the clamp velocity so instead of rod clamp wall up it'll be rod um, clamp up and this one is rod clamp down rod clamp active and this one like we said rod is clamped rod is clamped oops don't know what i did there but hopefully nothing bad all this should be on. We'll give power to this thing. And let's put it through the final test to see if we actually 
can get it clamped and on and all that good stuff. So we go up here and our, our computer screen shows that we're aligned, which is fantastic. Okay. First things first, let's move the wall towards us. So now that one is really close. So now we got to get a technician to go down here and pick, pick that up and put it inside. Oh, we didn't activate the clamp. Whoops, that fell down. Good test and good lesson learned. Move it back. Let's align it to the next one. I'm gonna put the screen above it so it's not blocked by our descriptions. Okay, the second one's aligned, more or less, aligned. Let's turn on our rod clamp. Now that it's active, that should work a little better. Also, this track is a little bit in our way. We're nicer, we're much better off being on this side when we're trying to plug this in than on this side. So that is not working and that's okay. Okay, what I wanna do then is this rod wall and this thing I'm actually gonna move everything up because we just found out that it's not really ideal for it to be in this position so let's move it up by four and that's okay and then let's move this thing up by four as well so I can get underneath it because once I'm underneath it, it'll be much easier to connect that um, rod to the clamp. So that could be the whole thing connected or the whole thing activated. Now the bottom track, we can actually leave. I don't need to move that. So I only really want to move this thing up so I can get beneath it. So let's move it all up. Oh no. <clears throat> That's not good. Well, it's not that it's not good. We just didn't put it in the right place. And we also missed our walls. So in this case, this is what we need. And then we need to extend it one over there. Okay, so now it should be everything. And we'll move it up by I think we said four. One, two, three, four. And now my technician can get beneath it and clamp or facilitate the clamping procedure. So there is some manual work or manual labor that has to happen. You have to have sight people and all that type of good stuff. So this is there, and then this one we're just gonna move up and plug it into that. I guess we also could align it. I don't know why they're there. We could just move them so they're not there randomly, but on the very ends like that. And that'll probably work nicer and look nicer as well when it's like that. Now that back one, is a bit problematic. Well, not problematic. And I think the best way to solve that is just to use a nice four piece like this. Beautiful. See, and it can look nice too and be functional. Now this one will do the same thing. We're gonna move it out just so we're not um, stepping on the tracks. And so we could align it with the end of the wall like that perfect and we'll put that four piece then the curve piece there we go so now we should be able to get beneath it and do our work only downside is the whole thing's a little bit taller which doesn't really matter but this thing's also taller so it should work the same way let's confirm it does Okay, we're aligned there, which is nice. 
we can turn on the clamp. We'll push the wall forward. Ooh. Okay, that's not good. I don't need it to move that far. Oh, I forgot about the top. Or did I? It should, really, it shouldn't have mattered. I only have one block. It's moving on one block there and moving on one block there. So why does it feel... Well, first of all, let's get this thing out of here. Alright, now that it's out of there. We'll um, move the wall up. That's definitely moving way too much. Ah, I see. Up here, we're moving the green part. And down here, we're moving the orange part. So I messed up. I messed up. That cannot be what we use instead we need to do this and move it over here and have it on that and vice versa for this side as well same thing we take this move it over by one put that in put that in and then this wall doesn't do anything for us and this one well actually it does this this will still be attached my bad that wall stays in place that's this wall stays in place there and this wall stays in place here it's the um, other part that actually moves within the system so this part is the one that's moving like that and on this side too like that and then we don't need the slanted piece and we just attach these ones here and attach these there so that should make more sense now. Up to our control panel. Okay. Let's get, get rid of this thing for a second here. We move the wall out and move the wall back. Only by the one slot, perfect. Now that camera may get in our way with the equipment we're going to have above that, so we'll have to see how that works. But maybe once you move the clamp back, it won't matter anymore. Okay, we'll move it towards us. Jump down there, and now we can get underneath here. We also need the clamp on. So once the clamp is on, hopefully our system attaches it. I see there's kind of this thing blocking us. Ooh. It didn't quite work the way I planned. This uh, wheel is blocking us, so I'm actually going to remove that wheel and leave us only the side ones. Okay, but now it's clamped. So our light is on, it's clamped. And if we press this, we move it down. Or hopefully in the various directions. Okay, what about down? What about up? Oh, it's working. Okay, I just have the buttons mixed up. Now, one thing that I didn't like is that it was kind of getting caught up on that top structure there. So I may have to actually move it out even more as well. So we had two comments we had. We had this one that we wanted to get rid of this here it didn't really serve any purpose on the top we'll leave it attached whatever like we'll have that middle one on the top it doesn't matter but now we should be able to get a good get a good access from the bottom so that's n number one and number two was when we picked it up it hit this well i guess it hit the same one um i guess the issue will be now if we're that that one is fine because of the well we could remove that middle part but we couldn't remove um, this one here. We'll still leave us with the issue. 
when we're trying to connect and plug in this one on the on the ends what i can do though is either move the whole thing out and extend the tracks here which is an idea or hmm, not sure okay we'll come to that problem later we'll come across a solution for that later this i want to extend the whole top of this tower so the rod clears the clamp or the track sliding track I'll put that here on both sides and then we'll put this here and this there and that should be everything we detached other than the actual part itself okay that's in we've given ourselves a little bit more space in the upwards direction from that i guess maybe we just ditch the front clamps all to get front sliders all together and just have it on a on a back slider system like this and then the top we'll have to see what we do so this could actually work where now we're not blocking ourselves with anything and on the top here this one's fine like that looks fine like fine on the back doesn't bother us whereas on the front these bother us again because that's what hit us like we hit that piece last time um I mean, what, let, let's do a trial where we just remove all the front ones and just have a back, a back lead track. So now the whole thing's kind of like swiveled, pushed forward. It may want to freak out. I don't know. It may want to. And then this can also be reduced. So now it's all just on the back wall. And we forgot to invert the thing, but that's fine. Okay, well, let's see if we push the rods down towards us, back. It seems to be working because it has two connection points. How we'd load more rods on there, I really don't know yet. Um, you'd need some kind of truck that can put a rod nearby. We may need to add a system after. I don't know how, how deep the wellhead would be, but that seems to be working like every everything else seems to be going okay so it's not a big deal let's just go into here now i want to switch our buttons one and two and i want to turn up the speed let's actually put it like one and negative one in this case we're pushing the the rods as fast as that we can on that connection or on that clamp Okay, push this out. Let's get down there and connect it. Oh, this is nice because you could walk right in here. You need to turn on the clamp though. Clamp on. Okay. Pick up. Beautiful. Okay, so that actually worked very well. And now it's attached there. We can now pull this back. And we can move this in a position here. And then we can move this down. And see it's moving very fast. Let's go back up. Hmm, it got stuck in there. And is it not centered? see we've stopped us or we've stopped it here but that seems that it this thing is not all the way um, in position like the it seems that it didn't go all the way which is interesting I want to pull it back up or move this all together okay now we move it back 
what about now? No. Hmm. Maybe we have to put it, feed it to this other clamp, so that may be the next step. But regardless, I'm happy with the progress. And this system is much cleaner, all things considered. And we can even, so this is where the hole is. So we can extend this out there like that. And then here we'll have the triangular piece that we can walk on at a nice level slant like that. Okay, that's good. Now how we can feed that clamp to this clamp. Oh, I see the problem. We have to actually pull this clamp up on this um, track, like on this track to go uh, above this one. Otherwise we're gonna be clashing with it. And that's why we have this thing so high. In fact, we may have to have it even higher. Like this may not be enough. This may have to be somewhere up here to clear the, um, where the, like our, the position of our, uh, existing rod in the wellhead may be anywhere. So we have to be able to go up high enough. Oh, and that was also weird. What about this side? Oh, both sides. Interesting. Anyway, that's fine. And maybe the bottom's fine too. Yeah, the bottom is. Cool. So there we have it. We've built the first stage of our nice oil rig. We built the whole um, clamping system. Stay tuned to the next video where we continue.